obviously a lot of, of what you talk about is on a range of different um, scientific matters, but something that has been a, a love of yours and has educated a lot of people that I'd like to talk about is the importance of sunlight mm. and especially the morning sun. And obviously you've been in Australia for a couple of weeks now and our sun is, it's got a bite to it, as I'm sure you've experienced. It does have a so, bite, yeah. So compared to other places in the world, like you don't have to be out there for very long to be able to get burnt and this and that. But a lot of Aussies experience, like we've all had like slip, slop, slap, which is the slogan about like putting a lot of sunscreen mm. on and, um, you know, it's been, you know, a lot about skin cancer and things like that. And there's a lot of research that talks to different things uh, to do with sunscreen, um, to do with when you should be out um, getting sun. I'd love to know your views on that, on sunscreen. Uh, yeah. I confess, I want to just highlight this because um, on some previous discussions of this topic, I've had um, elements uh, clipped out and I've been... In, um, misunderstood as thinking that sunscreen is not good for us or maybe even bad for us. And I want to go on record. This is a wonderful opportunity to say there is definitely a case for sunscreen. Mm -hmm. You do not want skin cancer. You do not want to burn. And the UV index is very high here in Australia. And as you pointed out, it has a bite to it. The sun has a bite. So I use sunscreen. I will repeat, I use sunscreen. <laughs> um, I do focus on using sunscreens that are basically where the only active ingredient is zinc oxide mm. because these um, the zinc oxide sunscreens, and by the way, I have no relationship to any sunscreen brand. I just happen to do that because the most of the sunscreens that do have things in addition to zinc oxide, not all of them, but many of them, I should say, not most, many of them include things that are known to go transdermally through the skin and that there are studies have shown that they may, may have some potential negative effects on other organs and systems of the body. And so given that there are excellent mineral-based sunscreens, I prefer to use those. Now, regardless of what type of sunscreen one feels safe using or not, I think it's worth mentioning that the best thing to prevent sunburn is a physical barrier a long sleeve shirt that's kind of loose. This is known all over the world, yeah. especially in desert cultures, mm -hmm. like a hat, right? A brimmed hat, if you will. Um, it, it's fine to combine that with sunscreen if you need it, but um, one of the best ways to keep from burning is to not let the sun reach your, reach your skin, right? Through a physical barrier. And that and there's no debate about whether or not the physical barrier causes you know potential ill effects of, you know, there are some sunscreens with some nasty stuff in mm. them. Now, how nasty and you know whether or not it impacts things like fertility or, or whether or not they're pro-cancerous has been debated quite a bit. I'm of the mind that if one can make a better, say, one can make a clearly safe choice, why risk the potentially unsafe choice, right? Especially given that the costs on these things yes. tend to be pretty much equal. Yeah. Um, and given that a physical barrier is zero cost, except you need the article of clothing. Well, then that makes sense. Now, so I wear sunscreen, especially in the middle of the day. Here, I've been slathering it on. Yeah. Um, I do think that it's worth noting that we do have a natural adaptation to sun exposure, which is the addition of some melanin to the skin, right? Um, the melanocytes, the cells that, that cause mm. some pigmentation can either turn on or migrate when we get some sun exposure to the skin. And there's a very close relationship between sun exposure to the skin and the production of hormones like testosterone, estrogen, and dopamine, uh, which is a neuromodulator. There's a brief anecdote in the landscape of natural biology that's relevant here. If you, There are certain animals like the Arctic fox and other animals like that that are no surprise, they're white in the winter and they happen to be darker in the summertime. So pelage color changes in certain animals by virtue of those same melanocytes mm. being activated or suppressed in the presence or absence of the sun. We don't have hair. We have little, little hairs on us. They're um, remnants of when we were probably much hairier organisms. Um, but when we get sunlight in our on our skin, there's the production of dopamine. Now, why would we say, okay, how dopamine and pellage color and all this? Well, it turns out that the same gene pathway, there's a, an enzyme called tyrosinase. Tyrosinase, anytime you hear ASE, you're talking about an enzyme. The tyrosinase pathway 
is the pathway that's mutated in the albino mutation. In other words, mm. the same pathways that control pigmentation of the skin and of pelage in animals that have fur is related to dopamine. Why? Tyrosine is the precursor to dopamine. So I'm throwing out a bunch of uh, things here, but here's the takeaway. Getting a bit, not too much, but a bit of sun exposure to the skin in the middle of the day is known to elevate levels of dopamine. And yeah. dopamine is a neuromodulator. You can, you can feel it. And it's known to elevate testosterone and estrogen yeah. in humans. And when people say, here, elevate testosterone and estrogen, usually what happens is all the women worry, well, I don't want my testosterone too high. But guess what? In women, testo the levels of testosterone per deciliter are higher than levels of estrogen. They just so happen to be on average lower than the absolute levels of testosterone in men. So men and women both need testosterone and estrogen to quote unquote, feel good, mm. to feel vigorous. And when this was a beautiful study published in Cell Reports Medicine last year or the year before perhaps, um, it was a study um, done in the Middle East where they, exp they had people go outside for about 30 minutes in the kind of late afternoon when the sun was going down, so not gonna burn you too badly, or in the early afternoon, and make sure that people got that sun exposure onto their skin, wearing shorts and a tank top or so. And what they found is that it significantly elevated levels of those hormones and feelings of well being, something that we've known forever. Mm. You probably didn't even need the study, but now that the study's published, we can look to that. And the feelings of well being associated with getting some regular sunlight exposure are related to this activation of this tyrosinase pathway and the release of dopamine, which again is a neuromodulator involved in many things, um, not just mood, but generally when we have a little bit higher circulating dopamine um, or release of dopamine in the brain, we feel more positive anticipation. Um, we enjoy things more, we have more energy. It's part of a small group of molecules called the catecholamines, which is dopamine, epinephrine, and norepinephrine. Those three act as a kind of cocktail in our brain and body to make us feel like we have energy. Mm. And in the winter months, when we're not getting as much sunlight, especially when we're not viewing morning sunlight, we're getting less sunlight down to our skin. That's why in certain locations on the earth, people feel malaise. Mm -hmm. They feel less excited about life. Dopamine levels are lower, which makes perfect sense given that sunlight is activating the pathways that trigger dopamine synthesis. So that's a lot of biology. It's kind of a chapter of biology kind of stuffed into one rambling sentence. But when you look at the mechanisms of these things, you start to realize like sunlight's great for us, but not too much. Yeah. And the timing of sunlight really matters. And artificial light, while wonderful, I mean, we all rely on it. It's a good idea to dim the lights at night. It's a good idea to turn off the phone when you mm. go to sleep. It's a good idea to look at most artificial light in the same way that you would view nutrition and calories. You're not just interested in getting enough calories. You want nutritious calories, right? That's really, I think, what we've come to conclude these days, whether or not you're vegan or vegetarian, omnivore or whatever. Artificial lights are mostly blue light, short wavelength light. Sunlight is full spectrum. It has reds, it has oranges, it has pinks. Even on overcast days, it has all that stuff. Even though you can't see it, it's coming through. So artificial lights, I look at as a bit of like empty calorie light. Mm. It doesn't do much for yeah. you. It's not great for you. It's not necessarily bad, but getting a lot of that without getting enough full spectrum light is why I believe a lot of people are experiencing malaise. I think a lot of the mental health issues that we observe nowadays in kids and adults are not just related to the content of what they're looking at. It's related to the illumination format, the, the you know, being in a screen all day, being in, under artificial lights all day, not getting outside enough. And as a final incentive for getting outside a bit, not too much each day, there's some beautiful studies looking at uh, myopia, nearsightedness, and mm. the fact that kids and adults who, who get outside, even if they're on their laptop or tablet or phone for two hours a day or more, again, you can be in the shade, don't get burned. I'm not suggesting anyone bake themselves in the sun for two hours a day or more are offsetting the development in some cases, partially reversing the offset, uh, partially reversing the effects of looking at things too close and being indoors, which is myopia, nearsightedness. So there's so many incentives for getting outside a bit, but yes, avoid getting a sunburn. And sunscreen is one way to do it, physical barriers another. And if you wanna know what's enough light, keep in mind that all of these systems I'm talking about, they are slow integrating systems. So if you get out on the weekend quite a bit more, Monday and Tuesday, you're probably fine. Yeah. Wednesday, you're probably fine. But then, you know, try and take a walk in midday, take your lunch outside, get out onto a balcony midday. You know, 
if you spend five days indoors, you'll really notice the negative effects. And if you've been doing that and you feel lousy, there could be any number of reasons, but lack of adequate sunlight might be one of them. Too much sunlight is the amount that burns you or gives you skin cancer. And people differ in terms of what that level of yes. exposure is. So I can't sit here and say two, two hours a day, you need to, you know, um, be able to really gauge what, what's safe for you. But you know, if you're avoiding sunlight, like the plague, um, that's not good either.